Hello class. In this instructional video for a photo text piece, we're going to do a project that will get you ready for your first photo text assignment. And the big picture on it is that we are going to be doing a lot with moving uh, stills. And sometimes we're going to be converting video into a still, still, so that will be an additional aspect of that. And we'll also be moving text and kind of doing dual motion at the same time, just to make it a little more interesting. And um, I've made a Google Drive folder that I want to take you to, where, uh, and I've shared that with you, and I'm just going to show what these elements are in here. There are four photos, there are uh, four movie clips, there is a music clip, and there are also documents. Uh, and one of them is a practice edit sheet that you might uh, find helpful. But most important is a Festival of Fools script, which you um, should uh, print because it will be easier to pull it up on screen, easier to have it next to you rather than to pull it up on screen. Although I will do a little of that anyway. Um, it's good if you have uh, an external hard drive. If you have a flash drive, that's good too. But really, uh, in making the file structure that we're going to do very soon, I would really prefer that you put it on an external device so that you, your video is safe and your project is portable. Uh, I am going to show you the project right now. Uh, this is it, and we're going to play it in just a second. You can see that we've got um, three video tracks two which are graphics, and um, we've got only one audio track, which is music. Uh, there are m uh, moving graphics all the way through, and uh, there are some uh, interesting transitions between the pieces. And essentially, what you're making here is in um, eight different sections, uh, beginning and ending graphic, which are the same, and then there are six different um, uh, pieces in the middle. I'm going to play, and we're going to uh, watch the whole thing. Here we go. We'll pay attention to the timeline and to the program panel. And there you go. So in this video, I'm not going to do the entire piece. I'm going to demonstrate the opening graphic and then the next two sections. I'll do a little bit of music editing after that and show you how to export again, but enough to give you the gist so you can finish the rest of it and uh, do that on your own. We're going to start with a uh, creating a file structure first. Say goodbye to me. And um, I'm going to do that on my external hard drive. So I'm opening that up and I'm going to make a new file, a new folder called Fools 3. And inside there, I'm going to um, uh, make four folders. And by the way, you have a practice edit sheet uh, that's in your documents that I'll make reference to. And it shows you that these are the four folders that you need to make. And that's going to be, let's first we'll make four folders. You can do file, new folder, or the shortcut is uh, shift command N, shift command N, kaboom, 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 kaboom. And uh, those names will be one raw, two 
to project three drafts and four master. The raw folder is where we're going to put all our video and the project folder is where we're going to save the project. Uh, let's um, open up the raw folder and we're going to just put this uh, subfolder on the side to receive our, our video. Now I have shared with you in uh, Google Drive a, a folder called BRD 230 Fall Editing Project in which there is uh, there are uh, four movie clips, four photo clips, a music clip, and there's also some documents in here, uh, which uh, are the, is the practice edit sheet that I just showed you, as well as a script, which I really would suggest that you print out and you have in uh, front of you. So what I want you to do is to highlight these guys, all of the video and audio elements, and then download them. Let's just say uh, I did that and here they are in my downloads folder. Boom. And after you download them, copy them and drag or copy and paste so that they go into your raw folder. So once you have created a uh, uh, file structure like this, and your, uh, all your elements are in your raw folder, then you are ready to launch Premiere. So I want you to get to Premiere as you know how. You might be able to get to it through your Spotlight search to get to Premiere. I have it in my dock. I'm going to want you to, su to select New Project. And after that, you're going to come to a title window, a new project um, window. This is an important one. Call it Fools 3. On the all important location line, browse to the project folder, that, that two project folder that you just created. So I have that in my external hard drive. Make sure you choose the right folder, the two project folder in that general folder. Check scratch disk to make sure that all elements are being saved in the project folder and click OK and you have your template. Uh, we want to import those clips from the raw file. We can do file import or the uh, shortcut is command I on a Mac, control I on a PC. So I'll do command I here and I am mapping my way to the raw folder that I just created and I want those, all those clips to import. And they will go into the uh, project panel. Um, so uh, now we want to start a timeline. And I'll just note that I'm not going to organize these clips because there's just not that many of them. There's, there's really no need, but everything's there. If I double click on video, and that's probably a good idea to uh, start your timeline with um, because you know you're either going to have to resize the the video or the photos, as I will explain. But let's just start with video and drag from the source panel into the timeline, and then release, and a sequence gets created. Um, we want to alter the look of the sequence so it looks better. Um, in this, and make everything blue here. Click everything here. At everything on the side so that we see uh, that all the tracks are ready to receive. But on, on this project, we, we only need um, one audio track. So I want you to go to Sequence, Delete Tracks. Sequence, Delete Tracks. And let's get rid of Audio 3. Okay. And let's do that again and get rid of Audio 2. But let's keep uh, video one, video two, and video three, and expand uh, these tracks. You can do them by hand by pulling on the edges here, but the shortcut is Command Plus uh, on your keyboard for the video tracks and uh, Option Plus on the uh, 
for audio. So Command Plus for video. And you can make these uh, a good bit bigger as you want and adjust it so that everything looks okay. And then uh, delete this first video um, for starters. We're not going to use that. And now you're ready to rock. Yeah, a rhyme reminder. Um, print this script because I'm going to be making references to it as I speak. So it's good to have it uh, right by your side. Now back to our lovely timeline. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add music. Go to your music clip and uh, at zero, give yourself an endpoint. Then go go about 30-ish seconds up and give yourself an out point. In and in out on the music clip in your source panel on the um, timeline. Give me either just leave the playhead at zero or put an I for endpoint at zero. This is targeted to A1, the only place where the audio can go. Uh, you're going to either click overwrite here or just the shortcut, hit the period key and you've got some music you can work with. We're going to do a music edit a little bit later. We have plenty for now. Uh, now we're going to make an opening graphic. What fun. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, consider whether or not you want a colored background. I kind of like black, but if you want to make a colored background, all you have to do is go File, New, and Color Mat. Yeah, there it is. And um, click OK on that first box. And um, it gives you a scale. I'm going to go down to the color range that I want. I like uh, navy blue. I'm going to pick that and hit OK. Um, color mat is a name for it. I could call it, you know, blue color mat, whatever. And then I'm going to drag that color mat over to V1 uh, right at the beginning. And uh, I've got a blue background. Uh, remember, I'm putting it on V1 because if I put it over the font, it would block it. So I, anything that's higher will superimpose over what's lower. So now I want to make a title, File, New, Legacy Title. And I'm going to call this Opening Graphic. And um, uh, I'm going to adjust the size of this title maker so that I can see everything appropriately. And uh, I am going to type in it. There's a type tool right here that you can engage, but usually that's ready to go even before you've done that. And I'm looking at my script, which says Festival of Fools. I'm going to give uh, a line space presented by Burlington City Arts. August 4 to 6. Uh, if I highlight all of this, I can center it. I can put it more in the middle. And now I can think about changing the font style. Uh, there are some legacy font styles below that you can pick from. I'm going to use the drop down above, and I like the font style called Trebuchet. That is my dog shaking. T R E B Trebuchet. And um, I hit return and everything is suddenly trebuchet. Yay. Now I'm going to work on font size a little bit. Um, I kind of like the lower font size uh, that it's, but I might need to move it a little bit to more in the um, middle. Just adjust the position a little bit and make the font size of the top one much bigger. And now that I've done that, I may want to move the position of everything. So you got to play with it a little bit to put it where you want it to be. Once I've, I'm pretty comfortable with the location, um, I am going to change the color of the top one and make that red. So I go into fill type, choose red, click OK. And I'm pretty good with that um, title. Um, and I'm going to uh, X out of it and drag that opening graphic to V2. And there I have my graphic ready 
The next thing we're going to do is motion. To create motion, you don't want to go back into the title maker. So if you say double click on this and the title maker comes up, that's not where you want to go. You do want to highlight, make sure that the graphic or what you're going to move is highlighted because what we're going to do is we're going to make that title sort of um, zoom out a little bit. Um, have it highlighted and then go into effect controls. And uh, if you are in effect controls, you should see um, this uh, motion display and you need to open up motion with this little arrow so that it opens up these numbers. Bring your playhead to the front of the clip. Again, this is going to be only up for about um, five-ish seconds. So we're going to make some motion within five seconds. We're at the front of the uh, clip. And there, um, uh, before you do anything, play with scale. In other words, we, we messed with that a little bit. Let's pick a starting point where the font is going to be a little bit smaller. So uh, decide how small you want the font to be before it starts to expand. I like that as a point. And once I've chosen that, then I'm going to click right here on this toggle animation and it'll make it go blue. And once that goes blue, there's actually a little diamond or key point that has been created in this display. Now I can move the playhead here or here. It's the same thing and move to the very end of the graphic. And since the toggle animation is activated, if I go up on scale and I decide what the end point is, so I'm going to hover and press on this number. Come on, baby, you can do it oh, too far. And I go to kind of where I think is a good uh, end point. Then that'll be the uh, point that it's going to go to. The larger I make it, the faster it's going to move. Let's take a look at it. And I like it. I like the way it's moving. I like the speed at which it's moving. If I didn't, I could erase that key point right here that I just made and uh, scale it to the point that I like and get the speed of the zoom that I prefer. Uh, let's look at my face for a second. So, hello. In the um, next couple of frames, what we're essentially going to do is do two kinds of motion at the same time. Pretty subtle. We're going to uh, create a still, either from photo or from video, and we're going to make that move. And we're also going to have the font move just a little bit with the idea that it's kind of interesting if there's a little bit of motion while you're watching what you're watching to keep you engaged. Let's do it. So back to the timeline. And at this point, it is a good idea for you to go back to the script and take a look. It's telling you what clip that you want to create your first shot with. And it's also telling you what the graphic says. OK, let's start with the image. Go to clip number 13, which I have up here. And um, I want you to, let me bring the volume down a little bit. Go to the point in the clip where you want um, the, the guy to end up. So I like that point right there with his uh, pins are kind of wide. And I've got to give myself an out point. That's the image I really want to work with. And then I'm just going to go a little bit before it, before it doesn't matter exactly where. And I'm going to give myself an endpoint. And um, on the timeline, give yourself an endpoint shortly after the graphic, not super important where. And we're going to have this targeted to V1. Hit the period key to lay that in. And we've got just a little bit of video. This matters. I want you to make sure that you've expanded this a little bit and go bring the playhead back to your final frame. That's what we're trying to freeze. If you are on that final frame, then highlight the click at, hit clip and right click it, either control click or right clip, and find add frame hold. Add frame hold. Click on that. Once you do that, oh, look at what happens if you expand it. You, don't worry, I didn't lose it. Uh, you created a one little frame gizmo, this guy, and that's what you really want. The rest of this, you don't. Delete that. But this guy is the freeze of that video. 
And you can expand that now to where you want it to go, which is from the five second point where your uh, opening graphic ended. And you want it to, to go, as your script indicates, to about um, 13, 14 seconds and use the music partly as your guide. Uh, I'm going to play the music to kind of get to that point. That's a good point right there. And I'm going to have this shot is going to last for all that time with some graphics on it soon. Now, uh, highlight the graphics so that we can do some additional manipulations with it. And once it's highlighted, go to Effect Controls, and I want you to play with scale and position. In other words, I want to get the guy a good bit tighter. I want to move him a little bit to the left so that eventually when I create some motion with this, he's going to have some uh, uh, room to move th for the shot to move a little bit left. Very good. Now let's create a title for this guy or for this section. File, new, legacy title. And we can call this uh, section one graphic. Doesn't really matter that much. And just give it a name that you like and click OK. And in here, uh, you want to make sure that you are writing what the graphic says in Burlington, uh, Vermont. And I'm going to right now, I'm going to change this to Trebuchet because I want to be working with my font style, which will have some size dimensions to it. So if I change here and go T-R-E-B. All right, I'm in Treb. Good. In Burlington, Vermont, the Festival of Fools. Um, and I need to adjust this uh, font size a good bit here. So things are starting to look a little more normal. And make that uh, a reasonable size. Fools is uh, an annual summer tribute to street performing a three-day event downtown. Uh, this is the opening parade. All right, so I have what I want to say, and I can adjust position. Move it over to the left. Um, I can adjust where it is, but I'm going to still change the font size some more so that I am working with something that I think is pretty manageable. And uh, once I have that, I'm, now I'm going to bring it to the spot on here that I feel is pretty good and make any other adjustments that I want in terms of spacing. Okay, and correct all of my dumb errors. Um, good, all right. Now, um, I'm also going to uh, highlight some things in red, like Festival of Fools. I'm going to change that to red to give it some more attention. And um, I think that's pretty good. If I wanted to make Burlington, Vermont, red i could do that too and now um this is okay but it's not as readable as i'd like it to be and we'll fix that so first i'm just going to x out of this and i'm going to drag this graphic onto v3 and i'm going to let it sit there for a second and uh, i'm going to create a banner banner underneath it to create a background graphic for your lower thirds, go to your uh, top menu and choose graphics. And uh, on the right, uh, I want you to choose edit. And there's going to be a new layer uh, thing that you can choose, or you can 
uh, pick that and pick rectangle. And that will give you this gray uh, box that you can manipulate on screen and you can uh, size to fit over your graphic. In fact, I'm going to suggest you bring it across the entire screen so it's there. Um, and um, let's uh, make some other changes to it. Uh, such as change the color from fill from the uh, to, from to um, black from gray. Okay, make it black, and then change the opacity on this line a little bit so it goes down a little bit. And then you can since you can see the font somewhat, you might want to expand the banner a little bit. Um, that um, looks uh, probably okay sort of but not really and there's a reason why uh, let's go back to editing after you've uh, um, created that graphic and find out where the graphic is see it, it put it automatically up on v4 but what you really want it is down here oh and it looks splendid uh, if you want to adjust the opacity a little bit more now that you can see it better go back to graphics and uh, go to uh, edit and go back to the uh, opacity line where you can make that adjustment. And there, that's pretty good. And now you are ready to make other adjustments. Go to editing, um, bring this so that uh, these graphics extend for naturally not the ent um, entire time, but maybe uh, going something um, half a second in and until the end on both the top and the bottom, and we will add some uh, dissolves on each end. To add, to add dissolves here, go into uh, Effects, go to Video Transitions, go to Dissolve, add cross dissolves on all the ends of both the lower graphic that you've created as well as the uh, title. Uh, shorten them, double click on each one and change the duration to about 10 frames. And when you do that, uh, you'll have a fairly aesthetic looking um, uh, graphic that pops on just quickly with a soft dissolve looking like this. <laughs> That's good. All right, now let's do some motion. We're going to do some motion first with the image. We're going to take that guy in the background and we're going to move him a little bit left. I'm highlighting uh, the still that we made and I want to be in effect controls. All right, so in effect controls, I want him to move a little bit to the left. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, decide, where I want him to be. If I want to adjust it a little bit, now that I see the banner in there, uh, I'm just going to put him where I want him to be and get him in that spot. Nice. Now I want him just to move a little bit this way. So uh, I go, I take my playhead and I bring it to the very beginning of the clip and I uh, you click on the toggle animation so it goes blue and I get a key point. Now I go at or toward the very end of the clip and I am going to move him so that he's going to go a little bit to the left. The more I move him, the faster he'll go. Let's see how it looks. I have two key points now. Take a look. Yeah, and he's kind of sliding over. And now I'm going to do something similar but rather subtle with the font. I'm going to make it move a little bit to the right and just create some opposite motion and just do that subtly. So I'm going to go near the beginning of the clip. Uh, I'm in effect controls. I've, it's got to be highlighted. I'm going to move the, oops, I didn't want to change scale. I wanted to change position. And um, I'm going to move it just a little bit, say here. Uh, and uh, that will be my start point. So if I now now that I've chosen my beginning point, if I click on the toggle, on the toggle animation, I get a key point. And I'm going to go to the end 
and I will have it move just a little bit forward. Not a lot, maybe more toward the middle. And then if um, I have those two bits of motion together, it'll look like this. Pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to do the next section, and it'll be uh, similar with a couple of uh, different uh, directions of movement, but we will do a couple of shortcuts, basically copying and pasting some of our graphics so we don't have to make them all over again. Very good. Uh, if we go to our script, we can see that uh, what we need is we need the mayor, the photo of him at 3584, and this is the graphic that we're going to be making underneath that. So the graphic of the, uh, the photo of the mayor rather is here. That's Mayor Moreau Weinberger. And um, we're going to uh, uh, put that in from about 14 on the last frame there, uh, all the way to 23-ish. Um, and you can sort of hear by the music point where a good point to stop is. Right there, okay, 24, that's fine and hit an out point there. And if I um, just take the shot itself, uh, no audio because it doesn't have any, I will hit the period button and lay that in. Oh, I should get rid of the out point, uh, option O. So it fits into that space and there it goes. Uh, bad news is that it needs to be resized. So let's do that. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going into effect controls and I'm going to change the scale of the shot and the position largely so that his head has a chance to kind of rise up a little bit. So I think I'll start it here and I'll have uh, and I'll move it up just a little bit um, as it goes. OK, that's good for now. Now I can copy the graphics that I made. First, uh, let me try to highlight the, um, the um, banner and if I highlight it, and I leave my uh, playhead in a different spot toward the end, and I go edit, copy, edit, paste, uh, I can get that graphic um, kind of remade so I don't have to make it all over again, and I can drag it um, onto this one. And I can put it so that it is, this is a, this is a tad longer, so it, sort of fits like that. Good. So now I've got a little banner right there. How cool. And now I can do a copy and paste on the section one graphic and I'll go edit, copy, edit, paste. And I will change the name of it to section two graphic. And if I double click on it, the title maker will come up and I'll change uh, pretty much everything that it says. And I'm looking at what it says, and that it says uh, Burlington Mayor. Sorry, Miro Weinberger plans to lead the parade this year. And uh, make this four lines talk about pressure exclamation point um, every year every year he's got to come up with a different costume I think it uh, and that looks fine. And then I'm just going to take the Burlington Mayor Moreau Weinberger part and highlight that in red. And that's kind of done. So if I X out of that and move this here to, uh, to V2, where the other one is, uh, then I have my graphic made. And now when I want to add motion to this, I'm going to start by highlighting the photo and then I'm going to bring the 
playhead to the beginning of the photo. I kind of like the position that it's in. And I'll uh, click on the toggle animation so it goes blue and I get a key point. Then I'm going to move the playhead to near the very end of the clip and I'm going to change the Y um, values so his head goes up a touch, maybe hitting the edge with his hat. And one of those two key points, I can look and see what the movement of his um, upward of, of him is. And it's fine. And then I'll do the same sort of thing I did before with the lower third, where I will highlight it. I will go to the beginning of the clip uh, on it. I will move the position of the font a little bit left. And I'll um, indicate that that's where I want it to start moving by uh, clicking on the toggle animation and I'll get a key point for that graphic and then as I go to the very end of the clip uh, I'll move that forward just a touch and that's how it'll look and that will be the pattern that I'm going to continue with the other sections of this project. Let's add a, a couple more uh, dissolves here for uh, the um, uh, font so that it looks fine. I'm going to dissolve, cross dissolve and adding those to the beginning and end of that too so that there are uh, 10 frame dissolves on both the graphic as well as um, the uh, graphic below and I'm pretty good there for the way that comes on and for the way it comes off. And now I want to make um, a music edit um, and uh, I'm looking for the point uh, where this comes to a reasonable end at the end of this. Probably around there is pretty good and I'm just going to use my razor blade and cut off what's there so I kind of know what I'm trying to connect to. And I'm trying to make some connection to that. But I'm bump, 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 bump. So that if I'm finishing the piece, I will have a pretty good idea of um, how to create a bed for everything. The last um, frame of this piece, the last graphic, is where it's going to say the same thing in the beginning. We'll end on the sting. That part. But then since there are four more sections, I need to go back about 36 seconds or nine times four from that place, which is about 117 ish. I know that because I've checked it out before, but I'm looking for kind of a moment where there's that um, uh, incoming sound. And I'm going to see if I can connect one to the other pretty good. So without connecting them directly, I'm going to put them apart a little bit and lay them on A1 and go to the two parts and see if I can make them edit fairly smoothly. And I'm going to go down into that trough right there where it goes down and I'm going just before this and see if it's reasonable. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's fine. And if you want to add, say, an audio dissolve there to make it uh, sound better, you could try that and you could put that over the two and see if that helps a little. Yeah, it's pretty good. So you're trying to make a music bed for the rest of your editing so that you continue to have a pattern to follow just as you have had so far. Now we're going to do just a couple more things. We're going to add a couple of transitions and vary them up from section to section and uh, we'll export. Let's go there. So uh, let's try for our transitions under video transitions. Hello. Uh, we are going to go to um, slide and push. I like those. They're kind of fun. I'm going to make these uh, moments a little bit bigger so I can see this much better on the roll bar. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And um, I'm going to see if I can put a push on this guy and a push here between these two. And 
Let's just see how that looks. That's fine. Okay. Let's continue doing something like that, but we're going to change direction. So if I put another one here and uh, in between these two graphics, that's fine, but I would like to change the direction rather than them all going uh, sliding in one direction. I'm going to double click onto the, um, uh, the transition and go into effect controls and see this whole thing right here. I can say whether I want it to go up or down. I want to say I want it to go up and it gives me an indication that it's doing that and I can change that. So add transitions to this so that there's some variety between how your uh, sections change from one to another. Have a little fun with that. Uh, I want to make sure I save my project. File, save. And uh, then I'm going to uh, export my project once it's all done, even though mine is not. But here is a reminder of how you do that. Make sure that you are not highlighted in another panel, but rather in the timeline. Make sure that you're highlighted there and then go File, Export Media or Command M. File, Export Media. You get your export window. Choose entire sequence at the bottom is probably wise. Choose H.264 as a uh, format setting. Uh, go to output name and change the name of this to something that you want to call it like Fools. Three. And since this is just a draft, I'm going to send it into my drafts folder, which is on my hard drive under Fools 3. And I'm choosing the drafts folder. Thank you very much. Save. And all I've done there is I've, saved, I've, I've said where I want it to go, where I want it to be saved, and what I want it to be called. And then at that point, I can export it. And it will take a couple of moments to do that and um, you can take a look at it there. While that is exporting, I uh, trust that you have a pretty good idea of how to do that. You can take a look at your project and then you can submit it. Um, again, this is a project which is generally designed to help you do a little more motion and a little more created creativity with text. If you have questions about um, what to do or how you might want to vary from what I did, please get in touch with me and uh, we can go from there. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.